it was all we ever did. Kill that bitch! I just want to ask bluntly, did you have anything to do with the murder of Marshall Blake and Floyd Epps? Nothing at all. As a matter of fact, I, I never even seen those people. Belly is a 1998 movie starring Nas and DMX. Nas plays the role of Sincere, while DMX plays the role of Tommy Buns Brown. The movie opens with them carrying out a multi-murder at a nightclub during a robbery. Following this, the lead characters seek out a new super potent form of heroin. The film is set in three places. New York, Jamaica, and Omaha, Nebraska. The two main characters originate from New York, with DMX's character traveling to Jamaica to obtain the heroin. The characters then begin to traffic what they acquired from New York to Omaha, Nebraska. The movie earned almost $10 million in the box office with a budget of $3 million. The film was poorly received by critics, scoring just 16 out of 100 on Rotten Tomatoes. Now personally, having seen the movie, I can agree that the plot lacked structure as the movie bounced around a lot and it was hard to follow. Now although it's not one of the greatest movies ever made, not many people know that it was based on a true story. The movie was based on the real life story of Alfred Almonde Cleveland and John Shackenbayo Edwards. The role Nas played was not based on a real character and it was written into the movie. DMX's character was based on Alfred Almonde Cleveland. The character known as Knowledge, played by Oliver Grant, was based on John Shaq in Bio Edwards. Yo, what's up? What's the deal, baby? It's Nas right here. We will now take a look into the true story behind the 1998 movie, Belly. The movie Belly was based on Alfred L. Monday Cleveland and John Shaq in Bio Edwards. The locations in the movie were changed. In the film, they use Omaha, Nebraska, when in reality, this was Lorain, Ohio. In the real story, drugs were being trafficked from New York to Lorain, Ohio. John Shackenbayo Edwards claimed he, quote, had Lorain on Smash from 1988 to 1991. He claimed the character who was really based on him was, quote, knowledge who really put buns onto Nebraska. So in the true story, he is saying that himself, John Shackenbayo Edwards, put Alfred Almonde Cleveland onto the drug scene in Ohio. Screenwriter of the film, Anthony Romeo Budden, grew up with John Edwards and Alfred Cleveland in Queens, New York. This led to him basing the movie off them. Except for heroin like in the movie, the drug of choice in the real story was crack cocaine. During the late 80s and early 90s, there was a large influx of cocaine into New York City. Some tie this into the Iran-Contra affair, which took place from 1985 to 1987. The Iran-Contra affair ties into allegations of US intelligence, turning a blind eye to Nicaraguan Contra drug traffickers, who supplied the United States with large quantities of cocaine from the Colombian drug cartels. The cocaine coming from Colombian drug cartels and Nicaraguan Contra drug traffickers made its way to certain US states such as Florida, Los Angeles, New York, Detroit and many other places. Once reaching the kingpins in New York, it would then make its way to traffickers such as John Shackenbayo Edwards. John Shackenbayo Edwards and Alfred Almonde Cleveland allegedly either had this cocaine cooked into crack while in New York, then trafficked it to Lorain, Ohio, or the raw cocaine was trafficked to Lorain, Ohio, then cooked there. Once it reached Lorain, Ohio, John Edwards and Alfred Cleveland allegedly began supplying the local population with crack cocaine. John Shackenbayo Edwards claimed he himself was one of the very first dealers from New York City to break into the drug market in Ohio. John Edwards and Alfred Cleveland's alleged Lorain, Ohio drug operation took place from 1988 to 1991. Eventually, the pair were caught, but not for the drug trafficking. They were picked up for several murders believed to be related to drug debts. However, they may have been set up. On August 8, 1991, the body of a prostitute, Marsha Blakely, was found in an alley behind the Westgate Plaza in Lorain, Ohio. Her injuries revealed that she had been lacerated and her throat had been slashed and she had been run over by a car. Eventually, Blakely's friend Floyd Epps had also been found dead. His body was found 400 yards less than a quarter of a mile away from Blakely's. A crack addict in Lorain, Ohio by the name of William Avery came forward to claim that John Edwards and Alfred Cleveland were allegedly involved in the murders. 
On September the 11th, 1991, William Avery went to the Lorraine police and told the officers that he owed $3,000 racked up in drug debts to a New York drug trafficker he knew as Al Monday. William Avery told the police he was unable to pay the debt, so Al Monday proposed to clear it, Avery would have to assault someone that owed him money. Avery claimed Al Monday then took him to the apartment of Floyd Epps on August 7, 1991. Avery claimed the second car with three males associated with New York drug traffickers then arrived. He identified these men as John Edwards, Lemworth Edwards and Ian Davis. Avery told the police that himself, Al Monday and the three men then went into Floyd Epps' apartment where they found Marsha Blakely and another New York drug trafficker. Avery claimed that Alfred Almonde Cleveland told him to assault Marsha Blakely to get information about missing drugs and money. Avery refused, so Avery claimed Alfred Cleveland then directed the other men to assault her, which they did. Avery told detectives that Blakely was rendered unconscious during the attack, at which time Ian Davis allegedly dragged her out of the apartment and placed her in the back seat of the second car which they arrived in. Avery claimed he then got back in the car with Alfred Cleveland and was taken back home. William Avery was subjected to a polygraph lie detector test on September 20th, 1990. The exam revealed that Avery was holding back on additional information which he knew about the murder. On September 26, 1991, a prosecutor deposed William Avery with defendant Lenworth Edwards and his defense counsel was present. At that time, Edwards had been charged and arrested for the assault and murder of Blakely. Following Avery's deposition testimony, the Lorraine County Prosecutor's Office provided him with $1,000 for relocation expenses and $2,000 in reward money. Following this, as the trial continued, Avery refused to testify against the accused. Avery continued to refuse to testify unless he was paid $10,000 in additional money. The judge then jailed Avery for contempt of court. Avery was placed in Lorraine County Jail for contempt of court. This was the same place the suspects were being held. Avery was threatened in jail by the suspects. Avery returned to the trial court and recanted. He testified that he had previously lied to the police. He claimed he had lied about the part where Alfred Almonde Cleveland had taken him home following the assault on Blakely. He now went on to claim that he was not taken home by Cleveland after Blakely was dragged from the apartment and instead, they all drove directly to the Westgate Plaza where Blakely's body was later on discovered. Upon arriving, Avery told police that he and Alfred Cleveland drove behind the plaza where the still unconscious Blakely was taken out of the second car and placed on the ground. Avery now claimed that a male he refused to identify was waiting in another vehicle. This alleged unidentified person supposedly walked over to Blakely's body and began making downward thrusting motions at her body with a shiny object that Avery couldn't identify. Avery stated at this point he got scared and ran home and spent the remainder of the night with his girlfriend. Avery admitted that he had lied when he had previously testified because he did not want to place himself at the scene of the murder. Following this, all of the suspects including Alfred Almonde Cleveland and John Shackenbayo Edwards were given life sentences in a state prison in Ohio. Years later in February of 2004, Avery went to the FBI and told them that he had lied when he testified that he had witnessed Blakely's murder. This time he had recanted his testimony and claimed his father committed the murder and pressured him to come forward so he could collect the reward money and hide his own guilt. Avery said he testified because he had feared that Alfred Almonde Cleveland would try to kill him over a $5,000 drug debt he owed him. Avery met with FBI agent William Beecham, who went on to interview Avery's father, who offered to take a polygraph test. No polygraph test was taken. In 2006, Avery stated, quote, I never witnessed the murder of Marsha Blakely, was not with her or Al Cleveland the night she was murdered. 
This was a story my father told me to tell, end quote. Avery claimed his father told him to make up the story, fearing that Avery would be murdered for his drug debts owed to the New York traffickers. Avery's father was the person who set up the police interview. Avery claimed that he admitted to prosecutor Jonathan Rosenbaum that he did not witness Blakely's murder, but Rosenbaum pressured him to provide false testimony. Avery said, quote, At some point, I was put in jail for protective custody. I then testified at the first trial of Lenny Edwards. My father wanted the reward money. He wanted me to ask for $10,000. I told Prosecutor Rosenbaum that I was lying for the money. We were alone in a room at the courthouse. He got very upset at me and scared me. He told me if these dudes don't go down for this, that I would. When I then asked him for the $10,000, he got more upset. End quote. Due to all of this information, there have been many appeals by the convicts, but all of them have been rejected. Witness Avery came to court, got on the stand and said that he lied throughout everything. It actually was an investigation that turned out that he was lying about, about that whole situation. In this video, we took a look into the true story behind the 1998 movie Belly. Screenwriter Anthony Romero Bodden based the film loosely off of John Edwards and Alfred Cleveland, who he grew up with in Queens, New York. John Edwards said, quote, A lot of the movie came from real events and scenarios. I was in tune with Romero while I was in the United States Penitentiary, but we had no input in the movie. End quote. DMX's character Tommy Buns Brown was based on Alfred Almonde Cleveland. Oliver Grant's character Knowledge was based on John Shackenbayo Edwards. In the movie, they featured heroin being trafficked from Jamaica to New York, then to Omaha, Nebraska. In the true story and reality, it was cocaine being trafficked from Nicaragua and Colombia to New York, then to Lorain, Ohio. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then be sure to smash the thumbs up button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button so you can get all the future notifications for when I upload. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.